turned into the Dangerous Mind household in Australia. And we're looking into the mind of Chris Watts, a man who killed his family in Colorado, United States, on August the 13th, 2018. And believe it or not, the legalities of the case are wrapped up and Chris is in his forever jammies. But we're going to go back and in our first part we looked briefly looked at Nicole Kissinger, but we're getting back to her because we found a lot of interesting stuff in the 1960 pages that she has told us. But you have to read between the lines to really see what she's saying. And now we're going to the day that Shanann's very good friend, Nicole Atkinson, yes, that's Atkinson, ladies and gentlemen, not Nicole Kessinger. Don't confuse the two. Uh, Nicole Atkinson rings police fairly quickly uh, for a disappearing person because she says, no, I'm not going to listen to you. Chris, because I know something is up with my friend and she would not be off the grid for this long. The reason why she wouldn't be off the grid for this long is because she's growing her direct marketing business and she's a very hands-on woman, pretty much 24 hours a day, it seems like, or a waking day is spent either with her kids or growing her business. So... Nicole says, I can't get hold of my friend. She hasn't been to her doctor's appointment for her baby. Last night I dropped her off at 10 to 2 in the morning after a trip to Arizona and she was concerned that you were having an affair, Chris. Well, she doesn't actually say that, but um, she was. And so she calls the cops and she says, listen, my friend's missing. Please come around and do a welfare check and see if she's okay. Now, as well as this, she's also calling Chris. And Chris is going, oh, don't worry about it. We had a bit of a fight this morning. And uh, she's gone to visit a friend, but uh, she didn't tell me who it was. So, no, don't worry about calling the police. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, leave it with me. No, Nick's not leaving it with him she's calling the the cops because she knows her friend just would not do this so he um apparently starts coming home but he takes such a long time to come home that by then the cops are there they've walked around the house several times you can see the footage find it on um youtube it's quite interesting um the policeman's got a body cam so you can see everything what happens you can when he talks to people you can see what's going on so you've got hands on to the investigation which is really interesting and he um, finally even he wonders why Chris is taking so long so he asks um, Nicole for the phone number uh, he phones Chris and he says um, is there any way you can let me in can you give me the keypad number yada yada Chris says no 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 uh, don't worry about it the keypad doesn't work but I'm only five minutes away by now so um, it's all good I'll be there so five minutes later he rocks up you see him uh, uh, coming up the driveway and he goes in to the garage opens the garage goes into the car and the first thing he does is check the car I don't know why he checks the car um it's interesting to to think why he checked the car. Um, somebody might just think that's that's completely normal. I just thought it's a little bit odd because I couldn't understand why he would check the car. I could understand him opening it and just maybe looking at the car seats or whatever. I don't know. But if she's if as far as he's concerned, she's supposed to have gone somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, in in the house he goes. It takes a little bit long in the house. I think I read somewhere that. Uh, Nicole actually said that he went upstairs, ran upstairs. But um, it, it's not inordinately long that he's in there. Uh, I I think there's a brief exchange with the policeman and Nicole, um, something about him being inside and uh, could they uh, let 
uh, could they let him in or let the policeman in or whatever? And he says something about only if you, only if the owners allow me in. And I think you can hear Nicole on the phone to um, someone who says, I give permission for him to go in the house. So I'm not sure if that was Shanann's mum or something. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter because Chris opens the door and – uh, Nicole and her son go in and, and the policeman asks permission and, yes, uh, Chris allows him in. They they go through the house very um, reasonably quickly and then Chris decides to park himself on this, um, I don't know what you you would call it, kind of this little um, bench top thing, not, not bench top, I, I forget what, what they're called, but um, he puts the phone there and meanwhile, I, I'm not sure, I think it was Nicole's son, uh, um, it's a little bit unclear, but um, finds the finds Shanann's phone in between a couple of cushions and they pass it on to um, Chris, who kind of... Uh, I don't know, he, he gets fixated on this phone. He totally gets fixated on this phone. And that's about all he does. He just kind of stands there on the phone. And he must be in front of the policeman because the policeman has him on his body cam the whole time. And uh, he's just really standing there fixated on this phone. And, uh, and Nicole's coming and going and Nicole's son is kind of coming and going and you see Nicole glaring, glaring at um Chris, uh, I don't know if she was frustrated, but her body language to me looks like she was quite frustrated with him, almost like, what are you doing? Why are you just standing there looking at that damn phone? Now, um, he probably had people to ring, yes, but she's done a lot of ringing around too pr um, prior to this with the probably the most important people, otherwise she wouldn't have um, rung the cops. She must be pretty um, sure by this stage that Pretty much everyone that she knows that could get in contact with is not there. But he's still fixated on this damn phone. That's that's all he cares about. It was like he was his security blanket, like Linus and Snoopy with his security blanket. Yeah. And if he didn't have these phones, I don't know what he would have done because he just wouldn't have known what to do. It was like a good diversion for him. He didn't know what to do, so here I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm busy looking at my phone. I'm doing everything with my phone. I'm looking at the security. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, Finally, obviously the policeman, there must be more policemen outside or something by this stage. I, I'm not sure, but um, somebody, and it's not the guy with the cam because he's been standing there the whole time, the body cam, um, has organised them to go and watch the security footage over at the neighbours. So they go over to the neighbours and uh, it's really interesting because <laughs> they're standing there watching... Uh, or the neighbour lets them in and puts the uh, puts the video on the television and kind of says um, uh, explains the position and explains what's going on and explains what he has seen and, and as he's showing the footage and uh, and Chris is standing there with his back with his back to the television he's standing there with his back to the television now. I'm sorry, but if my husband and two children have gone missing, I'm not standing there with my back to the surveillance. Even if I was, even if I knew what was on it, like, I mean, I knew what I did, like how I had done what I did and, um, I would be glued to that looking because I wasn't at the time looking for any strange cars. So I would be maybe looking at the screen to see if there was any strange cars or anything at all, even, you know, because I just want to see. I at least want to see and want to know that I have looked at that screen and, and have seen all that there is to see because it's not my footage. I can't just look at it any time. And so, but no, no, apparently Chris, Chris doesn't think the way I do and he's got his back to it. Uh, and occasionally he'll turn around and look and, and all he'll just keep repeating was um, that's me putting my tools and stuff in there that's they're putting my tools and stuff and, 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 and then goes back to fixating on this phone again and then goes back to fixating on this phone again 
then finally he puts his phone away. Um, first time that I, that you see on the footage. And he puts his hands up onto his head as if, honestly, it looks like he's surrendering. It looks like it's an I surrender move. So whatever is going on in his head at that moment, um, his body language is telling us that it was... He's almost ready to give up right there and then. So no wonder they got him to confess a few days later so easily because to me this was his I surrender moment and I'm sure the cops that looked at that footage and the detectives who would have looked at that body cam footage would have seen the same thing and they would have known that he was, um, you know, ready, ready to surrender and ready to even then come clean with the right amount of pressure. So it's very interesting and then as it, uh, the next most interesting thing is as they leave, uh, the cop then calls to Chris who's in, the fr- in front. He's in the front. He's leading the way out because he can't get out of that house fast enough. He just wants to leave that surveillance right behind. He doesn't want to think about it. He wants to get out of there. And the cop says, oh, okay, you go and do that and I'm just going to speak to this guy, the, the, the neighbour. And then that, they go through it again. And just as Chris goes out the door, the neighbour says to the cop, he's not acting right. And you know the clock is ticking on Chris because it's countdown time and it was countdown time. Oh, and another thing, Um, the, the sofa, the couch that the shrouded doll is on that was sent on the 9th of August, four days before the murders, I noticed in that video that first um, video, that the couch is in in an area adjacent to the kitchen. So FYI, if you didn't notice it, that's where it is. 